Good afternoon, everyone. I am Jessica Frank, A to J Authors Project Manager. A to J Author is a project of CALI, the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction. You may know about CALI from CALI Awards or CALI Lessons while, uh, during your time in law school. Anyway, Professor Pippins asked me to come talk to you today about A to J Author because it's the leading document assembly software tool used by legal aid organizations and courts to automate forms for pro se litigants. Before we dive in, let me give you a little background on what A to J Author is and why there's a need for it. So study after study has shown that there's a civil justice gap. There are 60 million Americans that are income eligible for legal aid. That generally means for a single person making less than $15,000 a year or for a family of four, $31,000 a year. Consistently, it's been proven that about 80% of the civil legal needs of low income people go unmet each year. Even if people identify their problem as a legal one, and even if they make it to a legal aid organization, 50% of the time they're turned away due to lack of attorney resources. There are only around 5,000 legal aid attorneys to help those 60 million people eligible for aid in America. These people, by necessity then, become self-represented litigants. The problem is even bigger in many areas of the law. In consumer debt, eviction, child support, it can be more like 95 to 100% of litigants that are self-represented. In 2004, Chicago Kent and the Illinois Institute of Design did a study of courthouses around the country. They sat in five courthouses and watched pro se litigants try to navigate the system. From that came a book called Meeting the Needs of Self-Represented Litigants. And in it, they talked about how they had found that the greatest barriers for self-represented litigants in accessing justice was getting over the hump of dealing with court forms. Court forms were created by lawyers for lawyers. They can be incredibly difficult to navigate and to understand, even for those of us with a law degree, much less a self-represented litigant in a stressful and unknown situation. So A to J Author was created in 2005 as a solution to that. Forms are the language that the court, lawyers, and the system uses to talk to the outside world and amongst itself. If you don't talk formish fluently, you're not going to be understood, you're not going to understand what's going on, and you're going to have a bad result in court. Existing interfaces in 2005 were mostly designed for professionals, that is lawyers, court staff, clerks, to quickly fill out well understood information. They were not designed for self-represented litigants who commonly had uh, maybe a high school education, English as a second language, they were stressed out because they were in dealing with a legal problem, and they weren't familiar with the legal terms and they weren't fluid in, fluid in form. The existing tool that was in place in many legal aid organizations was Hot Docs. At the time, it was owned by LexisNexis, and my old boss, Ron Stout, was a former vice president of Lexis. He negotiated a deep discount for legal aid organizations and a free server version for hosting them nationally. The Legal Services Corporation started funding document assembly projects through its Technology Initiative Grants, or TIGs as we call them. However, User testing showed that the hot docs interface still wasn't right for self-represented litigants. It was still too much like the form. So the State Justice Institute, the National Center for State Courts, and the Legal Services Corporation funded the creation of A to J Author. It was based off the recommendations of that meeting the needs study, the results of those months of observing pro se litigants in court, a to J Author's design thinking approach was a collaboration of Cali, Chicago Kent, and the Illinois Institute of Technology's Institute of Design. The design for A to J Author includes lots of white space and asking one question at a time for one piece of information at a time from the end user. With extensive user testing, we found that slowing down the process by breaking up the information actually speeds up the overall process. It's not intuitive to think that slowing down would speed it up, but it has been shown to work repeatedly. Also in the design, we have two avatars, one representing the end user and one is a guide avatar. The two avatars walk together down the path to the courthouse. The path moves closer to the courthouse as the user progresses, which visually indicates the fact that they are getting closer to completion. As the avatars move on, there are also tools we call just-in-time learning features that give the user additional help in answering the questions. I'll talk about those a little bit more in a second. For almost a decade, we added features and built up the authoring capabilities within this interface. However, we saw a shift coming in how people would be accessing the A to J guided interviews. This was around 2010 when smartphones were really kicking off and people were more actively accessing the internet from their phones. The problem was A to J Author was originally built in Flash and that doesn't work on smartphones. 
In 2012, we started a complete rewrite of the software to the current version called A to J Author 6. The current version is written in JavaScript and HTML with a CanJS framework. All that is tech speak for the current version runs in any modern browser for the end user to use and includes our addition of an, a mobile responsive viewer that recognizes the size of the end user screen and adjusts itself accordingly. It also means that the authoring side can be run in any modern browser as well. Instead of a downloaded piece of software, you run A to J Author from the cloud and you can do that on any device you'd like. The document assembly community is still working through converting the existing corpus of A to J guided interviews. As of the summer uh, 2019, we're just over 50% of our runs coming in each month from the A to J Author 6 viewer. It's an ongoing struggle for many organizations to find the time or the resources to devote staff time to converting and maintaining these interviews. That's where law students can come in. This is a project where law students, either in four credit courses or independent study, can partner with legal aid organizations or courts in need of automation help. It's a benefit to the legal aid or the court because they get you tech savvy law students who know how to automate documents to actually work on their projects. It's a benefit to you, the students, because you build out a portfolio of tech projects that you can take into the real world job market. You also make connections in the legal world with subject matter experts and the attorneys in the courts or legal aid space that you work with. And you get to work on something that actually helps people. I co-taught a course like this with a document um, automation component at Chicago Kent for several years. And at least five of my students that I know of have gotten jobs working specifically on A to J Author. Um, and they're at Illinois Legal Aid Online, Kansas Legal Services, and several other nonprofit and tech organizations. Some of the magic of an A to J Guide interview comes with what we call just-in-time learning features. These include learn mores. That's what's on the screen here. Learn mores are a way to give the end user additional information at the point in which they need it. You can explain a legal concept, give them the additional resources they need to answer the question at hand, or give them examples of how others similarly situated have answered the question. These learn mores can be just simple text, or as shown here, a graphic and text. Oh, as they say, a picture can be worth a thousand words. So instead of trying to explain where to find something on their court form or where the user should sign, just include an image with an arrow or a circle around it. A learn more can also be a video. There are great videos out there explaining difficult legal concepts in plain language that can be added to your A to J guide interview where needed. Another just-in-time learning feature is a pop-up. It's always best to avoid legal jargon whenever possible, but sometimes you just need to use that legally relevant term. So a pop-up is a way to provide a definition when you have to use that legalese. Before we talk more about A to J Author, let's cover how document assembly in general works. You start with an underlying court form or legal document that you want to automate. That form is called the template. The template contains variables, all the blanks an end user would need to fill out to complete the form. Those variables are tied to specific questions in the interview that you ask the end user. The end user answers the interview questions by filling in the blanks. Those answers are stored in the variables. Those variables are stored in the answer file. The answer file format is .anx. That's just an XML file format. That answer file is transmitted to the server when the user hits the Get My Document button at the end of the interview. The server puts the answer file together with a template, replaces the variables in the template with the answers the user input, and returns a completed document to the end user. The authoring interface also was designed to be user-friendly. We wanted actual lawyers, court staff, and law students to be able to use it pretty much out of the box. We didn't want lawyers to actually have to code to be able to use our, and build out expert systems. While teaching lawyers to code is trendy now and something I think is useful to know conceptually, it isn't required to, to use or know A to J author. Lawyers should conceptually understand how the tools they use are built and the frameworks behind them. A basic tech competency really is needed in today's law practice. You should be able to talk tech and to understand how software works, but I personally don't think all of us need to actually code in Python or JavaScript. So the authoring interface is meant to be intuitive, and we have a lot of training resources for you as you learn A to J author, which I'll talk about more later. 
The main structure of A to J Author is tab-based. You move down the list of tabs and add information as needed. The one you'll spend the most time in is the Pages tab. That's what's shown here. It's where you can create pages, script question text, add fields, connect one question to the next, and add scripted logic if you need it. The template creation process is meant to be easy as well. There are two options for templates in the A to J Author Document Assembly Tool, or the A to J DAT, as we call it. You can create a text template or a PDF template. Both result in a PDF being generated for the end user. The text template starts you with a blank screen and you add elements to it to build your template. It's kind of like a blank Google Doc and you have to build the document from it. It's most useful for cases in which you don't have an existing court form to work from or you want to generate a letter or motion of some sort that will contain an unknown amount of text input by the end user. The PDF template lets you start with an existing PDF form and upload it to add variable fields to it to automate it. This is one of the examples of an uploaded PDF. It's one of the sample exercises we have to train you. To automate it, you draw fields over the blank spaces and then add variables to those. This is similar to what you'll practice with your homework assignment for tonight. This non-programming interface has actually worked out pretty well for us. A to J Author is the most popular tool for low income people to create their legal documents and help represent themselves in the world. We're in 42 states, two provinces in Canada, Australia, Guam, the US Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. There are over 1,100 A to J guided interviews out in the wild, and they're used roughly half a million times a year. Through our partnership with Law Help Interactive, A to J Author has been run almost 5 million times now. This uh, graph is a little bit out of date, but we hit over 5 million with quarter two of 2019. And about 2.8 million documents have been assembled from an A to J guided interview. Let's talk now about one of the cool new things that we've added in the last year or so, A to J analytics. Why build out our own analytics tool? Why not use something like Google Analytics? Well, we've had 5 million runs, as I mentioned, since 2005, and about 2.8 million documents assembled. But what was that gap? Why, like, why are there more than 2 million people who start an interview and don't finish it? Bob Ambrogi, a legal tech blogger, gave a keynote at the Innovations and Technology Conference a few years ago and said, the more we can demo that the tech works, the more funding we can get for these type of projects. So we want to measure what works, and also we want to measure what doesn't work. We want to know where those 2 million people are dropping off. And there's a push in the legal tech community for evidence-based thinking, sort of copying the medical field and actually studying the data rather than just going with gut responses and what we think is the issue. So why not use Google Analytics? Google Analytics was actually creating a black hole situation for our authors. They could see people going into the A to J viewer and coming out again, but they couldn't see what happened inside the interview itself because the A to J viewer is a single page web application. To Google Analytics, it just looked like a user stayed on one page throughout their entire time in the interview. So in 2008, 18, we released our own A to J analytics tool. We use an open source analytics product called Piwik at the time, but it's now called Matomo. Matomo lets us add their tracking code to each page of the interview and see how people are using the A to J guide interview. This is an example of an analytics report that we give to our authors. It shows runs, where people left the interview, how many times learn mores or pop-ups were clicked, whether people use save and exit, whether they came back, it also gives demographic information about the user, their browser, their OS, their general location, um, what sort of plugins they have. Now we're aware of security concerns too. That's part of why we actually chose Matomo over using Google Analytics inside A of J. We host Matomo on our own servers, on the Kali servers, so that the user's data isn't being mined by Google. We have a pretty in-depth po privacy policy that dictates what we're tracking and what we're not. We anonymize the last four digits of the IP address so that we get general location information, but nothing close enough to tag it to an actual person. We also don't collect any personally identifiable information. We aren't looking at what, you, what the user is typing into the interview, and we aren't looking at their answer files either. A to J Author supports 16 languages. 
we've done the work of translating a set of common to all interview phrases and words. Think words like next, exit, save, required, continue. We also technically support the special characters used by those languages. However, you as the author need to do the actual translation of the question text, the buttons, and the fields yourself. Once you're ready to start authoring, we're here to help you. We have a YouTube channel with over 40 videos related to document assembly, including many on different aspects of authoring within A to J Author, but also some on plain language, how other organizations are using document assembly, and even a couple on hot docs for those that use A to J as a front end for hot docs. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash A to J Author. Our website, www.a2jauthor.org, contains many resources to get you started authoring. The most important is probably the A to J authoring guide. That is our software manual. It has detailed descriptions of how to do everything in A to J author. You can find that under the learn tab in the top navigation bar at www.a2jauthor.org. We also have over a dozen sample exercises created by our team to help you learn A to J author. These are step-by-step -step instructions, complete with screenshots and exercise files that'll help you practice your authoring skills. I believe you're being assigned the quick and easy automation one for tonight's homework. Just a note, there is a known bug with the checkboxes not working properly. So if you automate the entire form but your checkboxes in the template aren't working properly, we know about it and we're fixing that in our next code push. You can keep up to date on the latest A to J Author news by following us on our Twitter account, at A to J Author. We announce code pushes, bug fixes, upcoming webinars, new features, and general document assembly news there as well. Now I hope I have inspired all of you to try out A to J Author, but if you're really gung-ho about moving forward with a project, we have a couple options for you. Soon, you'll, soon we're going to be opening up a hosting service on a website called a2j.org for anyone interested in creating an A to J guided interview for self-represented litigants to use. So long as you don't charge the litigants to use it, we won't charge you to use A to J author or we won't charge you to host it um, either. If you want a bit more control, there's always the option to self-host. What I'm showing here is the GitHub repository for our A to J viewer. This is the, these are the two um, GitHub links. One is for the A to J viewer and one is for the A to J DAT, the document assembly tool. If you're interested in self-hosting, our A to J backend developer, Tobias N. Torejo, has done a great job with his instructions on how to self-host and the files that you'll need to do that. And he's also available to support those who self-host by answering questions and working through debugging problems um, with screen sharing sessions. So if you are interested in hosting and you want to move forward with a project, you can check out the README files on both um, GitHub, the A to J viewer, and the GitHub for the A to J DAT. To finish off my prepared slides here, I just wanted to share some of the new things that we're working on. Coming soon, so think next couple of months, we'll be rolling out a new set of end user avatars. We've been working on a set of avatars that are going to be as inclusive as possible, but won't be a time suck for people who are filling out the forms. Because ultimately the avatar doesn't matter to the, uh, to the ultimate completion of the form. So we're adding the new avatars and the way for the user to pick the one that best represents them, independent of the what's your gender question. So the user is going to see all eight avatar options, then they'll be able to pick from five skin tones and eight hair color options. We're also working on a grant that will make a to, the A to J author viewer WCAG 2.0 AAA compliant, which is the highest level of compliance you can have on WCAG. Um, WCAG is Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, um, also referred to as like ADA compatible. Um, it makes, gives you guidelines on how to make your website as accessible as possible. And AAA is the highest level. We're working on a grant to compartmentalize the different components of A to J author. So there is the author side of it, the viewer and the DAT. Um, and so we're going to make it easier for people to host them or host one or multiple variations of them and make it easier for us to work on the code so that we're not touching all three at the same time. Finally, we're adding enhancements to the map for those authors who are more visual, then the map will be an easier way for you to create content within A to J author. These are all in addition to our working towards open sourcing A to J author. 
Cali and Chicago Kent Law School co-own the A to J author copyright. So we needed to work with our university partner to get the approvals we needed. Those have come through. Now we just need to clean up the code and release the source for anyone to interact with. So that open source, completely open source A to J author is coming soon as well. That's all I have prepared for you. So if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. And you can always feel free to email me at jessica at kelly.org as you're working through your homework tonight. Um, if, it, if you decide to work on an A to J author project in the future, I'm available for our authoring side um, like Tobias is. So I'm uh, happy to do debugging sessions or answer emails, questions, um, anything you may have. So thank you. <laughs>